Oh yes, <laughs> stay right there. Stay right there, I'll be right back. Hey, welcome everybody to Talking Donkey International in our new television series, Country Wisdom. Let's set the tone for this new series of ours. It's found in Proverbs 4. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet and then all your ways will be sure. Join us now for Country Wisdom. Ever seen a real dragon? Silly question, dragons don't roam the earth. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Stay tuned to find out why. Jesus said, today is the day of salvation. Choose him today. But if you don't, he's reserved hell, fire, and brimstone for you. He's reserved the lake of fire for you. Not for just a few years, not just 10,000 years, but for an eternity. Young lady, you need to accept Jesus Christ today. He loves you. But for those that don't love him, you'll burn forever. It's time today. I saw you choose him. It is time to accept the love of Jesus Christ. If you don't, he's going to toast you for eternity. Jim, what are you doing? I'm lying to everybody. I know. Why? Well, because what these hellfire brimstone preachers are preaching isn't the truth. It isn't God's word. It isn't the love of God. Hold my Bible. I, wanna, I went through and searched out a few of these quotes from hellfire brimstone preachers. Listen to this. What will it be like for a mother in heaven who sees her son burning in hell? She will glory in the justice of God. Can you imagine that? How would you as a mother feel? I wouldn't be glorying in anything. Listen, love and pity for hell's occupants will not enter our hearts. So you're going to see them burning forever, and it's not going to enter our it hearts. It won't even affect us. Won't even no affect us. No compassion. You know Isaac Watts. Listen to what he said. What bliss will fill the ransomed souls when they in glory dwell to see the sinner as he rolls in quenchless flames of hell. That does not sound like bliss. That's not bliss at all. That, that's horribleness. Here's another one. Therefore, the elect shall go forth to see the torments of the impious, seeing which they will not be grieved, but will be satisfied with joy at the sight of the unutterable calamity of the impious. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely horrible. The blessed will see their friends and relations among the damned as often as they like, but without the least of compassion. How can anybody believe that this God the God of the Bible is that kind of God. He, he creates you. He lovingly fashions you. He comes and dies for you that you might have eternal life. And then it, these preachers are saying, but God's going to toast you for eternity. Where did those ideas come from? From the devil. Introducing Talking Donkey International. God once used a donkey to spread his word, but he'd rather use all of us. Our experienced team has preached, taught, and filmed in countries around the globe. In partnership with you, our mission is to share the life-saving love and hope found only in Jesus Christ with everyone in this lost and dying world. Your financial partnership with Talking Donkey will enable this exciting ministry to proclaim that Jesus is coming soon. It's time to prepare quality programming created to attract and reach viewers of the world. Together, we can carry the final Advent message to the individuals of planet Earth and hasten the return of our Lord. Please pray for and support the successful mission of Talking Donkey International. 
Did you know that Satan is a liar? <laughs> yes, he is a liar. He would like you to think that he roams around in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork so you can easily detect him if he is near. But that just isn't the case. He actually is sneaky, deceptive, manipulative, tricky, and can take on many forms to deceive you. He would also like you to believe that God roasts people in an everlasting hell. Well, that absolutely isn't the truth. Can you imagine the God of the universe, our savior, our creator, taking pleasure in roasting people in an eternal hell? I sure can't. Jesus loves you. He demonstrated that love when he died on the cross for you. The very character of God is love, compassion, and freedom of choice. Who will you choose to believe today? Log on to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org to get your free copy of Judgment in Hell. God may be kinder than you think, and you will learn the true story. Jim, you said that the idea for an everlasting burning hell where God is torturing sinners for eternity came from the devil, and that's very true. Most people, when they imagine the devil, they think of that creature, red horns and all, or something like this. And it's true, the Bible refers to Satan as a dragon, but he never appears like that. If he did, we'd run screaming because we would know that is dangerous. And instead, he cloaks himself in something that looks perfectly harmless and before we know it, we're listening to him. That's right. And his ideas are intriguing. They start to make sense. And some of them we never question. Like, would a God of love and mercy burn me in hell forever? Yeah, no, it, what we've got to understand is basically, I think you said sometime a little earlier, Jesus is a dragon slayer. That's what we need to understand. That's where we need to flee to him. That's our only safety. Because no dragon can stand up to him, not even the dragon. That dragon we just saw is quite the attraction. People driving by on the freeway can't help but notice it. And I've often thought, oh, that the real dragon were that obvious. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the but real isn't. dragon is not just a cute attraction. He really isn't. The, the thing is, he is such a liar, an absolute liar. It started all the way back, well, in heaven. We talked about that, I think, in another episode of what a liar he is. Drew a third of the angels with him. Gets down here to planet Earth. Matter of fact, we take it up in chapter 3 of Genesis. God, God basically said to Adam and Eve, look, there's a little test here for you. I need to know if you're going to be loyal to me. It's your choice. But there's a place out in the garden that just don't go near this particular tree. It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you see it, stay away from it. Well, Eve wanders up toward that tree. She sees this beautiful serpent in the tree, and this serpent speaks in a human voice. Basically, the devil had possessed this serpent. And they start in this conversation, and the conversation goes like this. The serpent, God had told Eve, the day you eat that fruit, you will die. Mm -hmm. That's pretty plain, isn't it? You're going to die. But then the devil says, and the serpent said to the woman, ye shall not surely die. Two choices. Either you're going to die or you're not going to die. He says just the opposite. In fact, he started out with a question. You know, did God really say yeah. that if you ate this, you'd die? Put just a little doubt yeah. in him. Like, doubt. like, wait a minute, is that what he said? Which should have, it should have been obvious. God made no bones about it. Eat the fruit, you'll die. Should have been the end of the story. Janice, maybe you can help me out to understand where people get this. God says, the day you eat of the fruit, you're going to die. Plain and simple, you're going to die. Now, it didn't happen all at once. It was over a time frame. He didn't strike them dead. They were just over time began to die. Because but the, the process of death began, began at Began right moment. then. The devil says, no, you'll surely not die. And where do we get the immortality of humanity, of human beings? Where, where does that come from in this text? Right there, because he 
has implanted the idea that death really doesn't exist. It's just life in a different form. And God said, there's, there's this consequence and it's a big bad consequence. And we've been told that, oh, it's not quite like that. I can see as our street preaching was earlier, <laughs> look, it's all based upon this right here. If you don't have, if you believe the devil in this text, then okay, maybe, yeah, maybe you could burn forever because you just go on and on, you never die. But if you believe what God says, there is no way you're gonna burn forever, even if that was something God said, and it isn't. Let me give you another, another text here that uh, will shed a little more light on it. Second Thessalonians, it's uh, chapter one and verse nine. It talks about uh, God and, and punishment. It says, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. I think we've latched onto the everlasting and not the fact that it's everlasting destruction. There's no coming back from that. Yeah, now let, let's set it up here a little bit because basically God says, look, I can't just go on with all this sinning forever because Adam and Eve blew it. A lot of the descendants have been blowing it. We all blow it. But he says, I have got to put an end to this at some time. We've got to get back to the perfect heaven that I created for you in the beginning. We've got to get back there. We've got to get back to that Adam and Eve can be restored to prince and princess and all of us be restored into the royal family. But you can't do that if you've got everybody else running around sinning, not believing God, not wanting God at all, not wanting any part of the kingdom. At some point he says, I've just got to, out of love, I've got to put an end to it. So he says here, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction, and you just nailed it, everlasting destruction. If I go out and I destroy something, how far is it destroyed? And if God destroys it, it's not ever bouncing back. Yeah, it's everlasting. It's sealed, it's done, it's final, right? You know, it's kind of like in scripture, I think so many folks don't take all the scriptures together. It's kind of like, you ever play uh, play with puzzles? Maybe that's something I shouldn't ask you. you know. <laughs> no, I love puzzles. Yeah, we, we get those once in a while for Christmas time, you know, and friends get together and thousand piece puzzles, 1500 piece puzzles. What's the first thing you do? Uh, well, you pour all the pieces out of the box and then you start turning them over so that they're all facing up. And then I don't know what your method is, but I'm looking for the four corner pieces and then all the edge pieces. And then I start filling in from there. Pretty soon you fill it in. You, you never stop though, do you? And say, well, oh, it's all finished. Okay, I know what this piece is over here. And I've, I've got a full idea of all this over here. It doesn't happen until you've got the whole thing completed. And I think that's the way it is with the Bible. If you want to know about immortality of the soul and hell, you flip all the pieces over and begin looking at all the pieces and fitting all the pieces together. Because, well, uh, what's an old saying? Someone says, uh, and uh, so someone committed suicide, killed themselves, and another text says, go ye and do likewise. <laughs> well, Putting two pieces together that weren't meant to fit they together. They weren't meant to fit. You've got to fit all the other parts together with it. Sometimes I think people don't examine where they've gotten the ideas that they have. They've been passed down. They're so, they're so common. They're in so many religions. It's in every cathedral, old cathedral that you go to, you see the stained glass pictures of the fires of hell. And I think we just don't look at why do I believe that? And does that match? Going back to your puzzle analogy, the first thing I do is prop up the picture on the box yeah. so that I am following, there's the finished product. And so that's I can I tell you if I've gotten those together in the right. You gave me the perfect thing. I did? You turn oh, up, you that's turn a up score. the score. I don't do that very often. What is the total picture <laughs> of the Bible? It's Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. It's Jesus' love. And so when you flip up that picture, you start putting the puzzle together. It's all about Jesus' love. If you get something over here that doesn't seem like it fits with Jesus' love, then you've got to figure out why. And, and how it all fits better. You, you were on a roll, I didn't want to interrupt, but it was just, <laughs> you said that so perfectly, I just had to get that in because that's really what we're doing. We're putting a puzzle together 
It's God's love. It's the picture of Jesus Christ who gave everything for us. The devil said, no, 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 you can't believe him. Well, wait a second. Is this the guy who caused, this is the guy who causes sickness and pain and suffering and disease and the list goes on and on. And that's who we want to believe? No, you've got to look at whatever puzzle piece that you're examining and think, how does that fit into the picture of who God is? Yeah, yeah. Does it fit into the picture of who God really is, who the rest of Scripture is trying to describe to us? And if it's not fitting, you have to toss it out. It may have come from a different puzzle. <laughs> there you it go. may not go to this set. Or it fits in a different <laughs> corner of the puzzle, you know, somehow. Let me read another one to you in uh, Jude. Um, what am I looking for? Verse uh, 7? Yeah, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, that set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God didn't like what they were doing at all. They were really messing up big time. They weren't following anything in the normal uh, line of, of what God says humanity should be doing. And he says, causes fire and brimstone to rain upon them. And what? It says it's eternal. Now, Terry and I have filmed together many places of the world. We were at Sodom and Gomorrah, the Dead Sea there, and guess how much fire we saw? Um, I'm guessing none. Exactly. Not a bit of fire. It's eternal fire, but why, why would you call it eternal fire? If it fits it into the puzzle. It is just a little bit confusing. Yeah. But what do you think? If it fits, if it fits into the whole puzzle, how does eternal fire fit into all this? The effects were eternal, not the literal fire. Exactly, exactly. It, uh, you know, he burned everything up until he didn't need to burn it anymore. Until there was nothing left to burn. Just nothing left to burn, yeah. Yeah, now, I just happened to have a couple pieces of brimstone there. I saw those. It, you know, I just happened to set these up early. <laughs> This one, this one has already been burned. It's, it's totally been burned up. And I don't know if it's going to work. But yeah, is go it, ahead, grab it. It's got to be safe to touch. You're it doing is, it. It is. And then I've got another one that hasn't been burned. And you say, well, why does one already burn and the okay, other one Okay, do isn't? I need to back up? Okay. Uh, no, I mean literally back oh, up. No, 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 no. I'm no. not that fond of fire. Let's I, see if I can get this thing going. I here. would make a lousy fireman. And... Uh, like I say, this may or may not work. I gotta get a spark going on it. There we go, let's try it again here. But the key is, I've seen some of this burn and there is some that was never burned up. And you say, well, why didn't it burn up? It's because smoking. everything God did. Ooh, I can smell it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's sulfur, it's sulfur. Yeah. Because the Bible said on Sodom and Gomorrah, it rained fire and brimstone. This is the brimstone, fiery brimstone. And he basically uh, burned everything up, including everybody there who didn't listen to him. Now, let's see if it's, yeah, it's going a little bit on the side, but it's kind of too bright out today to see it. it at nighttime, it really glows. And uh, yeah, I definitely don't want to get in it because the, the uh, sulfur smell is just powerful, powerful. Anyway, we'll let that go though. Where did you find brimstone? That's from that's from the Dead Sea. Really? Right where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. One, it was once there, no longer. Because so the eternal fire obviously still isn't there. So eternal cannot mean what we sometimes just assume it means. Uh, exactly. Eternal fire, you would think, was still burning. And people understandably can get confused. Because if you just look at one or two scriptures, that one and then the one that talks about the wicked and saying the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever, you can understand how it's easy enough yeah. once Satan plants the idea in you that you're going, oh yeah, you know, God will torture us forever. Just think about it. smoke. The smoke of their torment rises forever. That smoke is going up and up and up. It never eradicates every molecule. So how long does it continue? Forever, right? The smoke continues forever and ever. Now you're going to make me think about chemistry? Well, think about it. I was an English major. 
Anyway, we, we, I know we've kind of got to finish. We've got some other places to go and things to do. But, but I think uh, the important thing here is God's character, that big picture. What is this whole Bible telling us about God? And does it fit to imagine him torturing people forever? Exactly, exactly. No, it, it just doesn't. You know, I was going to say even the Koran says that Sodom was, Sodom was destroyed. The Bible says it, Koran says it. We need to believe it, destroyed, not continuing on. How could a loving God, and we're going to be talking about this more, but how could a loving God who came down and died for us ever want to continue to have us burn forever? doesn't work. Just Even doesn't our work. little human brains recognize that's not fair. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's much more to come here. Hi, I'm Jim Ayer. My good friend Terry Cantrell and I have traveled the world together, filming from Egypt to Zanzibar, from Costa Rica to Brazil, India, and beyond. For years, we've captured stories that uplift the God of heaven, stories that touch and change lives. Now we're on a new adventure, and you're invited. We started Talking Donkey International. Talking Donkey is a media ministry dedicated to sharing Jesus Christ in a unique and powerful way, out of the ordinary, just like a talking donkey. Like us, I'm guessing you're tired of the same old cookie cutter programs that line the Christian airwaves. The gospel is exciting. It's time to jump out of the mold and let the donkey talk. When that happens, people will pay attention. It's way out of the ordinary, and we're inviting you to become a part of this exciting and innovative outreach to the world. People are tired of watching the same old thing. Become a financial partner with us today, and together we will change Christian TV forever. Give the donkey a voice. Did you know that Satan is a liar? <laughs> yes. He is a liar. He would like you to think that he roams around in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork so you can easily detect him if he is near. But that just isn't the case. He would also like you to believe that God roasts people in an everlasting hell. Well, that absolutely isn't the truth. Log on to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org to get your free copy of Judgment in Hell. God may be kinder than you think, and you will learn the true story. Janice, it was at a gas station, maybe somewhat like this, and many more, in the Washington, D.C. area. Some years ago, 17-year-old young man and another man, John Muhammad, they got this bright idea that they were going to go out and kill some people. So they cut a hole in the trunk of a car big enough so they could have their high-powered rifle, and they could lay down through the car, and they could shoot people at the gas station. It was a, I don't know if you remember that. I do, and I remember being more worried than you think someone in California would be, but that's because my sister and nephew lived in D.C. Yeah, and I didn't live in D.C. at the time, but a little time later, and I got to tell you, when I was gassing up my car, there were many times I thought about that. Absolutely scary. They ended up killing 10 people, 10 people. And it was, I think, in 2012, finally, that uh, uh, John Muhammad got the, the death sentence and was killed. The other young man wasn't old enough at the time of the crime, so he's still alive. But I think about that, you know, they killed 10 people. You know, what I think of is we think about judgment because all of us will be judged at some point. But if you have bought into the eternal hell idea, you have to think, all right, Cain, the very first murderer, killed one person. So he has had 6,000 more years of punishment than this guy? That doesn't seem fair. You could ask a six-year-old and they'd tell you that wasn't fair. We have this innate sense where we know that is justice. Exactly. So how can a just God get accused of something like that? We, we would say is cruel and unusual punishment. Well, uh, us, us little humans would say that. <laughs> Matter of fact, I heard some time ago that in the death penalty, 
they now didn't want people to receive injections for the death penalty because that prick in the skin would be cruel and unusual punishment. And yet we think God is crueler than we are. Oh, far cruel. Can you imagine? I mean, you know, what we talked about earlier about what people say, the hell, fire, and brimstone people, it's absolutely inconceivable that you could believe a God who came down to this world and laid his life out for us and, and took, the, took the, the chance that he would no longer be God. The way he did this whole thing to pull it off, he, there was an opportunity he would no longer be God. He would be dead for eternity. I mean, that's how much he risked because he loves us so much. And would that kind of God take any kind of joy in torturing people? But that's not to say there isn't a judgment. Very true. Matter of fact, the Bible talks about that at the end, there is a judgment. Everybody is gathered together at this final. From, from the beginning of time, everybody is there. And God has judged everybody. Those that love him are all together with God. Those that don't are all looking on, as it were. And finally, everybody says, true and just, Lord, true and just are your judgments. But they don't want to change. Their hearts are still set. They're still, they're still against God. And God finally, it calls his strange act. He calls fire down from heaven, rains fire down and destroys all the wicked for time and eternity. Every, every semblance of sin, every, every evil thing that ever was here on planet Earth, it's gone. There's a verse that says that we'll even go look for the wicked and they can't be found. That they're burned every root and branch. They're gone, yeah. ashes under our feet not burning forever and ever. Yeah, you know, friends, God says that he wishes we'd come to him because he loves us. He's done absolutely everything. Janice, I can't even imagine anything else God could ever do to call us to his side, to, to call you. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie that the devil says that God is gonna burn you in hell forever. It's not gonna happen, but God says, there will be a moment, as Janice said here, there will be a judgment time. But who wants to be on that side? You don't need to be. <laughs> you don't need to be on that side. You can be on God's side in his loving arms for all eternity. Matter of fact, God says, I'll let you sit with me in my throne and rule the universe together. That's how wonderful God is. And I wonder, Janice, you know, I just wish we could say something else to folks to, to have them accept Jesus Christ. He's done all the work. All we have to do is accept it. Say, thank you, Lord, I'm on your team, and throw ourselves into his loving arms. That's right. Throw yourself in his loving arms. Hey, thanks for joining us for Country Wisdom. See you next time. <laughs>